Hello guys, today I'm back with another new drug approved by FDA in 2020. And that very drug is guys, none other than uh, antipsychotic amisulpiride. So amisulpiride is an older antipsychotic, but I'm discussing this today because this drug guys has been approved by FDA this year for a new indication. So that new indication is PONV guys, PONV is post-operative nausea and vomiting. Right, so let us discuss a little bit about this drug amisulpiride. And guys, it's a blocker of both D2 and D3 receptor. The location is not only in CTZ area because of which it is used in PONV, but because of block of D2 receptors in the limbic system. And there is a reason why it is used as an antipsychotic as well, atypical antipsychotic. Now, as how is it different from other atypical antipsychotics? So remember here, it blocks D2 and D3 receptors, but it has no blocking effect on the 5-ST2 receptor, which other atypical antipsychotics act upon. That's one difference. Second difference is it blocks D2 and D3 in CTZ and limbic area, but it has no effect on the CS, that is corpus tritum. And there is a reason why EPS or extra pyramidal side effects are usually not seen with amisulcrite. And that is the reason why we use it or we have approved it in PONV as well. Right, so this is what I've depicted here, guys. Um, this is all because of its effect on mesolimbic and mesocortical system. It is effective in psychosis, but because it has no style effect, it has lesser EPS and low, no 5ST effect. That is why it has lesser weight gain as well as sexual dysfunction. So among the atypical antipsychotics, it is one of the drug which is less toxic, right? Now let's have a look at its route of administration, guys. It is a drug that is given by intravenous route and it is given by infusion. And that infusion is to be given gradually at a period of one to two minutes. The dose is different for treatment and prophylaxis. For treatment, the dose has to be 10 milligrams. Prophylaxis, it has to be five milligrams. Side effects, guys, this drug, it can cause QT prolongation. And the reason because it causes QT prolongation, it must not be used along with droperidol. Because as all of you know, droperidol, it is a neuroleptic, antipsychotic. That can be used in neuroleptic anesthesia. So if I'm using droperidol, I'll not use amisulpiride in that patient for PONV. The reason being, droperidol also causes significant QT prolongation. Whereas, if the patient is also given ondansetron, 5 to 3 antagonist for PONV, so I can use amisulpiride with ondansetron, but in this case, you need to monitor the ECG guys, right? Other side effects are easier guys. Hyperprolactinemia can be seen because of block of B2 receptors in the pituitary, hypokalemia, hypotension, as well as abdominal distension. So these are the side effects that can be seen, but the most important one here is QT prolongation, which you have to keep in mind while prescribing it in PONV. Right guys, so this is what we have to discuss today. A new use of a drug amisulpiride for which it has been approved in 2020 and that is for treatment of PONV. So guys, I'll keep on posting these new updates, new drugs, new treatment guidelines in my YouTube channel guys. So, so that you get the notification on time, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on this icon. All right guys, till then, see you on the other side in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.